There are a number of orc gods in Dungeons and Dragons lore. They tend to be brutal, corrupt, and antagonistic. And of course, orcs take after them. But which orc god is the most wicked, the most twisted? Well, I aim to find out. As we've seen in other videos, things vary a fair amount depending on the campaign setting and the addition of the game. And orcs are a kind of creature that really exemplifies this variation as they have changed and been reinterpreted over the years. Some world builders treat orcs just as evil monsters, not really much different than demons or vampires or zombies. Others treat them as essentially just tribalistic people, crude and aggressive in ways, yes, but also with a culture and with free will and deserving of some amount of dignity. There are pros and cons on both sides of this argument, and maybe by looking into the orcish gods, we will gain some insight into the strange case of the orc. Prepare your scholars' packs, my brave companions, as we seek out the most evil orc deity in D&D. Begin things with Luthic, goddess of caves. Her alignment is lawful evil, though it was chaotic evil in 4e, and neutral evil in 3e. In 5th edition, her domains are life and nature. In 4th edition, her domains were earth and protection. And in 3e, her domains were cavern, earth, evil, family, healing, lust, orc, and sloth. The cave mother, the great mother, and the blood moon witch. Luthic is an orc goddess of fertility, survival, and motherhood. She is the wife of the central orc god, Grumpsh, and despite her evil alignment, she also represents the nurturing aspects of orc society, namely the protection of the caves in which orcs dwell. Of course, the main purpose of protecting the caves is so that the young ones grow up to be powerful, vicious orcs that go out and commit violent atrocities of all kinds. Luthic is worshipped by orc women who look to her for guidance in matters of family and community. She is revered as the maternal figure among orcs, fiercely protecting her brood and ensuring their strength and brutality. Despite her ferocity, she does display moments of wisdom and cunning, understanding the broader implications of conflicts like the eternal war orcs have against goblin kind. Through her divine powers, Luthic can unleash devastating magical assaults, inflicting diseases or manipulating others to her advantage. She's also known to heal or even extend the lifespans of those orcs that are most deserving. Aside from her spell casting, Luthic has unbreakable claws and she draws strength from the earth. She's able to impart healing while she's in contact with stone or soil. She wields her powers to do all these things, to heal orcs, to spread plagues, to sow discord, and she often uses manipulation to achieve her goals within the orc pantheon. Outwardly, she appears subservient to her husband Grumsh, but the truth is she holds significant influence over him, and even more so over their son, the orc god Bogtru. Additionally, Luthic engaged in secret alliances and even romantic entanglements even with entities outside of the Orc Pantheon, which I kind of would hope so. The Orc Pantheon's not that big. This complicates her relationship with Grumpsh and with other gods, and it potentially has altered the balance of power in certain moments. Luthic plays a crucial role in shaping Orcish society. Her spirit is there whenever an Orc is born and whenever an Orc dies. Her emphasis on fertility is of massive importance, and she is largely the reason why orcs are so populous and so widespread. Luthic also has devoted followers. They're known as the Claws of Luthic. They imitate both her ferocity and her healing abilities. They fight with clawed hands instead of the typical orc weapons of axes and spears, and they serve as guardians of orcish culture and strength. While Luthic is essentially evil, and she does play a major role in the propagation of many evil orcish conquests, she also has this other effect of influencing orcs away from being even worse. Without Luthic, orcs might just be nothing more than demons. She has this way of shaping the orcs from utterly feral savages into organized tribes. It's complicated though, because if you think about it at the same time, 
Orcs becoming more organized also means that they're more capable of posing serious threats to civilization. We could debate this all day long, but I'm sure we can agree that Luthic is not the most evil of Orcish gods. Next, we come to Bogtru, god of strength. His alignment is lawful evil. However, in both 4e and 3e, it was chaotic evil. His domain in 5e is war. I couldn't find any domains for him in 4e. And in 3e, he had chaos, evil, orc, strength, and wrath. The leg breaker and the fist of Grumsh. Bogtru is a prominent orc deity portrayed as Grumsh's son and lieutenant. He embodies physical strength, endurance, and tribal loyalty. Bogtru is really revered by the common, run-of-the-mill orc warriors, and he's associated with martial power and combat. He appears as a gigantic, muscle-bound orc, and often manifests through sounds of breaking bones. Along with brute strength, he is also legendary for his stupidity. Yeah, that's right, he's actually one of the least intelligent gods ever known. In battle, he prefers to use his bare hands. He shuns conventional weapons and armor, and he just goes about essentially wreaking havoc wherever he goes on the battlefield. He has come into conflict with many other deities, including other orc deities, but he always maintains his loyalty to his father and mother, Grumsh and Luthic. So faithful is Bogtru that he follows his father's orders without question, even when they are nonsensical, for example, Bogtru once stubbed his toe on a large rock, and Grumpsh cursed the stone and destroyed it along with Bogtru's assistance, then proudly declared it a victory over nature. Bogtru's title of leg breaker comes from a myth in which he was ambushed by a behir, a massive serpent-like monstrosity that has a dozen legs and breathes lightning. Bogtru fought the thing with his usual barehanded technique and broke every single one of its legs, one by one, then slew it. A broken Bahir leg bone became Bogtru's holy symbol thenceforth. Warriors who honor Bogtru keep stables of powerful aurochs, riding them into battle as a tribute to the god and to the beasts themselves, which are revered as sacred symbols of Bogtru's spirit among orcs. Clerics of Bogtru pray for their spells at dusk, and during the Festival of Strength, which is held on full moons, orcs undertake extreme physical challenges. So much so that they are often lethal challenges, though they consider this to be a way to weed out the weak from among the devoted followers. Bogdru might be evil, but his variety of evil is nowhere near the most vile. It's the evil of dumb brutes and ruffians. We now come to Ilnaval, god of strategy and orc captains. His alignment is lawful evil, though it was neutral evil in 3e. His only domain in 5th edition is war. I couldn't find any domains for him in 4th edition. And in 3e, he had destruction, evil, orc, planning, and war. The war maker and war master, the horde leader, the crafty warrior, son of strife. Ilnaval is a god of strategic warfare. He is revered by orc battle leaders for his embodiment of overwhelming numbers in combat. He appears as a battle-scarred orc warchief, exuding confidence and inspiring bravery among his followers. He combines a bold and direct demeanor with cunning strategy. He teaches careful and detailed planning in order to maximize success in battle. He also commands orcs to be courageous and proactive and to despise cowardice and underhanded treacherous schemes. His avatar is invulnerable to non-magical weaponry, and it wields a deadly broadsword that causes profuse bleeding in those it strikes. There is a chance that any non-orc hit by it will be instantly slain. The Warmaker wears a suit of red chainmail that deflects ranged attacks from both weapons and spells. Ilnaval plays a major role in leading Grumsh's forces in battles against the Goblinoid Pantheon. These epic clashes take place on the infinite battlefield of Asheron, a lawful evil to lawful neutral outer plane. Despite his ambition to seize Grumsh's throne, Ilnaval maintains a delicate balance with his superiors, particularly fearing the strength of Bogtru and forming a quiet alliance with the orc gods Shargos and Yurtrus to counterbalance the influence of the orcish gods of war. Ilnaval is revered by orcs as a daring leader 
and a cunning strategist. He's known for his tactical prowess in maximizing battlefield success. While he does harbor aspirations to ascend to Grumptious position, his loyalty to his race and his intense dislike for the goblinoid gods remain unwavering. He is the patron of orcish leaders, guiding them to train rigorously and to lead their tribes into battle with courage and unity. He is also the patron of orcish crossbreeds, interestingly enough. Creatures known to revere Ilnaval include the Ogrelon, the orc-ogre hybrid, the Tanaruk, the orc-demon hybrid, and even the half-orc, the orc-human hybrid. Ilnaval is callous, violent, and brutal. But like the Plain of Asheron, he is only evil to an extent, and at times he leans more towards lawful neutral. We definitely cannot consider him the most evil orcish god. There is a lot to consider. There's always a lot to consider. And consideration takes much time and energy, which is why I would like to encourage you to become a supporter of the channel on Patreon. My patrons are a big part of what allows me to produce regular content like this. Alongside supporting the channel, being a patron gets you some exclusive monthly benefits, such as the expanded versions of RPG maps, the full version of the newsletter, Scrolls of the Bard, which includes unique monsters and NPCs in it, and your name entered into monthly drawings in which the winners can select from some really cool rewards. Go check it out and see for yourself. And if you can't become a patron just at this moment, make sure to sign up for the free newsletter, which includes a welcome issue right away. Links for everything are down in the video description. Next up is Yurtris, god of death and disease. His alignment is neutral evil, and that does not seem to have changed across any of the editions. In 5th edition, his divine domain is death. I couldn't find any domains for him in 4e, and in 3e he had corruption, death, destruction, evil, orc, suffering, and wrath. The White Hands, the Lord of Maggots, and the Rotting One. Yurtris is the most repulsive of orc deities. He is feared by both orcs and other races alike, as he represents the inevitability of mortality and the harshest realities of life. Yurtris serves as a counterpart to the orc god Shargos, who brings about a fear of the unknown and darkness. Yurtris has the most grotesque appearance of all the orcish gods, with tumors and rotting flesh and noxious gases. All this symbolizes the horrors of decay and plagues. Yurtris's omens manifest as outbreaks of illnesses or the stench of rot, instilling fear and dread among the orcish tribes. He is not known for communicating much, but he wields formidable divine magic and possesses the ability to inflict devastating diseases upon his enemies or his victims. We could say that Yurtris is a singularly terrifying force to be reckoned with. Yurtris's realm is Flesh Slough, located in the gray wastes of Hades, the neutral evil lower plane. His domain there is shrouded in mystery and despair, and even divine avatars have failed to return from there. In the orcish cosmology, Flesh Slough stands as a grim reminder of mortality where those who fight poorly are condemned to permanent death at the hands of Yurtris. And yet, Yurtris plays his role in the grand scheme of things. His avatars are dispatched to spread disease and punish orc tribes that defy the decrees of Grumsh, the primary orc god. Thus, Yurtris, his avatars, and his plagues serve as divine instruments of death and retribution. Despite his solitary nature, Yurtris has an alliance with Shargos, the orc god of darkness, aiding in subtle efforts to counteract the influence of the orcish gods of war. Even Grumsh is rumored to fear Yurtris, with some suggesting the one-eyed god's reluctance to confront him directly. Yurtris' relationships outside the orc pantheon are fraught with rivalry, particularly with other gods of death and disease, like Talona. As Yurtris seeks to expand his domain and oppose rival deities whenever possible. Yurtris is more feared than worshipped. Really, orcs appease him out of dread rather than devotion. They seek to avoid his wrath by offering fealty and sacrifices. His followers, typically outcasts from orc tribes, enjoy a certain degree of independence due to their association with this morbid deity. Though, of course, this is also because they are regarded with aversion by their peers 
who would rather just keep away from all that nastiness. Followers of Eurtrus accept that death is inevitable, and they see outbreaks of disease as a manifestation of death's inexorable advance. The clergy, known as the White Hands, play crucial roles in determining the safety of food and water supplies. They quarantine the sick. They even harness diseased individuals to be used as weapons against enemies. So, orcs as exploding biological weapons. Yurtris' priests serve as intermediaries between their tribe and the deity. They plead for mercy during times of disease, and they offer sacrifices to appease him. They conduct rituals to honor the dead, sometimes even collecting the heads of fallen heroes or enemies for ceremonial purposes, and they facilitate the passage of souls to the afterlife according to orcish beliefs. It's really hard to say who's more evil between Yurtris and Grumsh. There's a certain instinct to say that Yurtris is worse just because of how gross and off-putting he is, but if we look at the big picture, Yurtris and his followers really occupy a neutral evil, leaning towards true neutral position. As scary and miserable as death and disease can be, they are natural parts of existence, things which we all must contend with. Yurtris is not the same thing as, say, the god Moander, who is much, much worse. Grumsh, on the other hand, really instigates numberless amounts of wars and atrocities and acts of malevolence. His impact is far greater than Yurtris's, far more widespread. Yurtris remains kind of aloof. Grumsh is far more active and really just causes a greater degree of harm and suffering. So let's take a look at him. Grumsh, the god of orcs, with a chaotic evil alignment. In 5e, his divine domains are tempest and war. In 4e, they were destruction, storm, and strength. And in 3e, cavern, chaos, domination, evil, hatred, lust, orc, strength, war, and wrath. You gotta love how 3e had so many divine domains. So Grumsh is the most well-known orc deity in all of D&D lore. He is the chief god of orcs, and he represents their desire for conquest and power. His titles include the One-Eyed God, the Cursed One, First Power of the Orcs, He Who Watches, and He Who Never Sleeps. Grumsh is symbolized by his ever-open eye, overseeing and judging all of orc kind, driving them toward a destiny of world domination through endless war. He typically appears as a towering, battle-scarred orc clad in black plate mail, with a single eye either in his forehead like a cyclops, or one eye to the side plus an empty eye socket to the other side. His single eye represents his relentless gaze and power, but it also represents how he sees things in only one way. His way. Grumsh is a violent and bloodthirsty deity, reveling in warfare and destruction, driven by a savage desire for chaos and carnage, pushing his followers to engage in conflicts at all times. Despite his power, Grumsh's narrow perspective and short-sightedness are his weaknesses. He often reacts with violence when feeling disrespected or overlooked, hindering his effectiveness as a deity. His wrath can be easily sparked, leading him to act impulsively and violently, often without any regard for long-term consequences or even strategic planning. He rules with a harsh, despotic hand, expecting strength and brutality from his followers, and caring only for the glory and expansion of orc territory. Grumsh possesses powerful artifacts like the Blood Spear, which can increase in length and cause paralysis to those pierced by it, as well as an eternal torch that emits corrosive black clouds and allows him to cast deadly spells. Grumsh's pantheon initially lacked a true native plane of their own until they settled in the infinite battlefield of Asheron, ruling over the face known as Nishrek. Orcs believe they can earn their afterlife on Asheron, fighting in Grumsh's eternal war against the goblinoid hosts. The realm of Nishrek is rife with battles, and it's heavily fortified. There are six main cities ruled by powerful orc clans that are under Grumsh's dominion, constantly vying for power and status within the hierarchy. Grumsh mainly focuses on larger threats and conflicts, occasionally dispatching avatars to oversee battles or intervene against foes such as the elf god Corlon. He maintains authority over the orc pantheon 
which is referred to as the Tribe of He Who Watches, where each deity embodies different aspects of the orcish desires and motivations, as we've been seeing here. Grumpsch demands strength and destruction above all. His wife, Luthic, serves as a stabilizing force to balance this out. She's always there, present in orc society, ensuring cohesion and cooperation among the orcs, even in the face of Grumpsch's wrath and chaos. Grumpsch employs powerful proxies, including demonic orc berserkers, to act on his behalf in the material plane and to lead orcish forces and territories in his name. He harbors a deep disdain for non-orc entities, and he constantly battles other gods for whatever he considers should belong to the orcs. In particular, he harbors intense hatred for elven and dwarven gods, and he demands his followers crush the elves and dwarves and seize all that is theirs. His arch nemesis is the elven god Corlon, who is responsible for destroying Grumsh's one eye, according to many sources. The battle between Grumsh and Corlon does have various interpretations. There are conflicting views on Corlon's victory, and some even say there was the involvement of other deities, such as Sehanin or Lolth. So there's a multifaceted account of the great battle between Grumsh and Corlon. There are also important myths surrounding the creation of the world that tell of a perceived injustice faced by Grumsh and his orcs, who were denied a territory of their own during the allocation of lands. This is what prompted Grumsh to so adamantly demand that the orcs conquer and rob from all the other races. So Grumsh is certainly a strong contender for the most evil orc god. He embodies destruction, brutality, and all the worst aspects of war. It's impossible to know just how much harm to people he has caused, even to innocent people. And yet, I cannot think of him as the most vile. At least there is a sort of straightforwardness to the violence he provokes. The pride and the envy and the wrath that he instills in orcs at least is in some kind of competitive sphere. There are so many groups that fight back against him, that contend with him. He's not trying to bring about universal apocalypse. He's just a highly antagonistic competitor. So who is the worst? Who is the most malevolent? Who sinks deepest down to the depths of the dreadful mire of evil? Well, my brave companions, that would be Shargas, god of the night. Alignment, neutral evil, though it was chaotic evil in 4e and 3e. His only domain in 5e is trickery. In 4e, there doesn't appear to have been any domains assigned to him in official sources. In 3e, his domains were avarice, chaos, darkness, envy, evil, orc, and trickery. The Night Lord, the Blade in the Darkness, and the Stalker Below. Shargoss is the orc god of stealth, coldness, darkness, and thievery. He is worshipped by orc rogues, assassins, and those who prefer subtlety and cunning over brute strength. Shargoss is associated with the night and shadows, and his followers often operate under the cover of darkness. He appears as a tall, gaunt orc with ebony skin and eyes that glow with unholy light though at times he manifests as dark shadows, or simply as ominous effects like sudden cold air, or dreadful moans, or a fever accompanied by horrible chills. Shargoss's realm is called the Night Below, and it is located on the outer plane known as the Bleak Eternity of Gehenna. It consists of labyrinthine networks of tunnels and caverns, twisting in all directions, seemingly infinite and extending beyond the known bounds of Gehenna. Some theories suggest that the night below transcends its confines, reaching into cold areas across different worlds. This bleak domain is characterized by perpetual war and a darkness so profound that even light magic can only illuminate small areas. Shargoss deploys avatars selectively during conflicts between orcs and other races in order to fuel more widespread warring and to gather corpses for his necromantic purposes. He displays a hatred for all beings. 
though he has formed strategic alliances with the orc deity Yurtris, as we heard before. He leverages their combined abilities to counterbalance the warmongering influence of Grumpsh, Bogtru, and Ilnaval, while secretly undermining their schemes to strengthen his own position. Despite Grumpsh's reluctance to embrace subterfuge, he has occasionally relied on Shargoss's clandestine aid and conflicts with the goblinoid forces. Though Shargoss harbors a deep-seated resentment toward Grumpsh for a number of past grievances. Shargoss is revered by orcish bandits and outcasts who work under the cover of darkness, those who are considered unfit for traditional roles within the tribes. His followers dwell underground and are tasked with eliminating intruders while performing clandestine tasks for chieftains. Shargoss and cultists are generally despised by other orcs. They secretly cull the weak within the tribes, murdering those orcs whom they deem unworthy. Known for his cunning, secretive ways, and his cruelty, Shargoss is considered the smartest among the orc gods, surpassing even the general Ilnaval in scheming. His hatred extends beyond non-orcs to a fundamental disdain for all life. He views orcs merely as tools for destruction. In this way, he is quite the opposite of Luthic and Bogtru, as they promote the unity and loyalty of orcs. This deep-seated hatred for all life that Shargoss harbors extends to everyone, even to divine beings, even to his own existence. In other words, he despises all other gods, and he despises the fact that he himself was even created. He strikes out against anyone who exacerbates his misery, which, in his view, includes pretty much everyone. He detests the very forces of creation that gave rise to him, and he finds pleasure in using his powers of necromancy to seize everything that creation cherishes, to twist all life into death or undeath as a means of avenging himself for having been brought into such an awful and insufficient universe. In my video, The Six Levels of Evil, I describe just how malevolent people can be. The orc deities that we have seen before Shargoss fall between the first and fourth levels of evil, spanning everything from ignorant, thuggish brutes to genocidal warlords. But Shargoss's variety of evil goes all the way to the sixth and final level. He hates life, and he wants to wreak his vile revenge upon the entirety of creation to destroy and extinguish everything. In other words, he wants to control all of existence to be the endbringer. Because of this, I deem Shargoss as the most evil of all orc gods. In some ways, he reminds me of a demon lord. Of all these orcish deities, his plots are the ones that most need to be thwarted. Hopefully some other god or some party of legendary heroes can put him out of his misery. Also, I have to say that in reading through the Orcish Pantheon, I really think that orcs on the whole are supposed to be evil monsters, not just another regular humanoid race, the same as humans, elves, dwarves, and halflings. Yes, there could be an exceptional orc here or there, and that can be interesting, but all the orc gods are evil. Luthic, Bogtru, and Ilnaval do have some redeeming qualities, but they're still evil aligned overall, and they still contribute to the orcish spirit of perpetual war and the base drives of rage and savagery. I want to give a thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon, and especially high praise to these splendid fellows here, in particular Adam Wood, Vince Valelli, Nick Thy Pirate King, Locke Monroe, Nicholas A., and Lucius Tenebri. Until next time, my brave companions, be on the lookout for orc raiders that could come to attack and steal all that you hold dear at any time. And as always, may your adventures be many. Many.